Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 107, and for this one, we play a high stakes meetup game. It's 5, 10, 20, no limit. We play at the Hollywood Park Casino in uh, Los Angeles, California, and I've been excited to share it with you for a while. I've just been really busy lately. I was at Running Up Reno. I uh, played in a bunch of tournaments out there, I actually cashed in one, which is rare for me, so that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, National Cat Day snuck up on me. I hope you guys had a great one. Um, I'm a big fan of cats, as you guys probably know. But anyway, a few announcements to make. The first one is that Andrew and I are going out to Deadwood, South Dakota. We have a meetup game at Cadillac Jacks on November 8th. So if you guys are around the area, check that out, have some drinks, play poker with us. And then from there, we're actually going to Hoboken, New Jersey. We're going to the Wicked Wolf Tavern um, at noon on... November 10th, we're gonna watch the Jets and the Giants game. Uh, we're teaming up with DraftKings, which is gonna be pretty cool. They're doing like a bunch of odds uh, boosts for that game. If, you, if you're interested in betting it, I'll have more information below in the description box if you wanna check that out. But uh, we're not actually gonna play any poker on that trip. It's gonna be the first time we're just hanging out with people and watching football all day. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then from there, we're gonna go to Grayton Casino in Northern California. It's my it's uh, my hometown casino, right where I grew up, about an hour north of San Francisco. November 15th, we'll be doing a 2-5 game there, and that'll start at 2 p.m. And then November 16th, we'll be playing a meetup game tournament. It's a $345 tournament, and that's gonna start at 11 a.m. So uh, if you guys are around, then uh, yeah, come hang out with us. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Los Angeles, home of rooftop swimming pools and crazy poker action. We head into Hollywood Park Casino. It's a beautiful property. Today we'll be playing the highest stakes meetup game that we've ever held. We're in the VIP room. It's 5, 10, 20 with no cap. We get five tables of it, which is incredible. We're making some progress coming out of a downswing, so I'm excited at the opportunity to potentially win big and gain even more ground. I buy in for 3,000, then we get started. Early on, I'm dealt king queen offsuit in the cutoff. The button actually straddled this one for 20 instead of the under the gun player, so the small blind acts first in this instance. The big blind calls for 10 more, I raise to 100. The button three bets to 370, the big blind folds. I don't have a hand that I want to battle with that badly, so I let it go. It's not that interesting of a hand, but I'm showing it because I get three bets six out of the first seven times that I raise preflop. It's the biggest difference about playing higher stakes compared to playing one, three, or two, five. There's a lot of three and four betting. My second table of the night, I've got ace king offsuit under the gun plus two, I raise to 65. Middle position player calls, small blind who just sat down, three bets to 310. I know nothing about this guy and feel like four betting may slightly be overrepping my hand. I call to see a flop in position. Middle position player folds, it's heads up, the flop comes jack six three, all hearts. It's not what we want to see with the ace of diamonds and king of spades. The small blind leads for 250. I've got no pair and could already be drawing dead. No choice but to fold this one. Next I pick up 6-4 suited in the under the gun straddle. Middle position player limps in, the cutoff calls, the big blind makes it 150. Getting a discount with a playable hand, so I make the call. The two limpers call, we go four ways to the flop. Dealer puts out jack five deuce rainbow. We have the gutter with the backdoor flush draw. Big blind checks, I'm happy to see that. In general, folding 6-4 suited to a large preflop raise is probably best, but if you do play it, you're gonna have to bluff a decent percentage of the time to make it more profitable. Seems like a good situation to do so. I bet 325. The middle position player folds, as does the cutoff. The action's on the big blind. I'm hoping that he'll let it go. Eventually he does, the order pushes us all the chips, we win our first significant pot of the night, and we're hoping to build on that. Here we've got ace eight suited in middle position, I open to 65. The hijack calls, the button calls, the big blind calls, and so does the under the gun straddler, we're going five ways to the flop, it's jack four three with two diamonds. We have the nut flush draw with one over and a backdoor straight draw. The big blind and under the gun players check to me, if I were up against one or maybe two other players, then I bet as a semi-bluff, but against four players, I check because it's very unlikely that I'll get all of them to fold. I don't want to get check raised, and it'll somewhat disguise the strength of my hand if I do hit a third diamond. The hijack believes that he's got the current winner. He bets 120. The button calls. The big blind and under the gun both fold. I call. Three of us see the turn. It's an eight. We make a pair, and now I have a hand with some showdown value. I check. The hijack bets again. He makes it 310. The button folds. I'm not going anywhere. I call. We're heads up. The river is a red deuce. Fortunately, it's a deuce of hearts. We don't make a flush. I check. The hijack checks back. I turn over ace eight, thinking it's probably not the winner. But it turns out it is. The hijack has pocket sevens. There's a nice pot out there. The dealer pushes it in our direction. And for the first time tonight, we're winning. We're up about 400. Later, I'm dealt pocket queens in the small blind. Under the gun plus one opens to 65. Under the gun plus two calls, it's on me. I've got the third best hand in poker, but I'm up against an early position raise and an early position call, so it's not an ideal situation. 
Both players could have strong hands. I go for a 3-bet anyway, and I make it 325. Under the Gun plus 1 thinks it over, then lets it go. So does Under the Gun plus 2. We're up 500, and we're in a little groove. Dealer likes us, so he gives us another high pair. This time it's Kings in the big blind. Under the Gun plus 1 limps in for 20. Small blind calls, I raise to 150. Under the Gun plus 1 calls, small blind calls, we're going 3 ways to the flop. It's 8, 6, deuce, all clubs. We've got no puppy feet, but likely we have the best hand. Small blind checks, I bet 250 to deny equity. Under the gun plus one folds, small blind is not as kind. He makes the call, the turn is the queen of clubs. Small blind checks, my hand is significantly downgraded. Betting would be turning a hand that has at least some value into a bluff, so I don't necessarily need to do that. I check back. The river is the deuce of hearts, small blind leads for 300. It's not a large bet, still looks like he's going for value. It's a tough spot for me. I don't know if I'm gonna win often enough for a call here to be profitable, so I reluctantly let it go. It's a frustrating run out for a hand that's so fun to have pre-flop. We were moving up the ladder. We just played queens, then kings. So what do you think the next hand will be? If you guessed aces, you're incorrect. We've got ace 10 suited in the small blind. Under the gun plus one opens a 60. He's a fairly new player. I don't know anything about him except he appears to be a regular since the other players at the table all said hi to him as he took his seat. He opened from early position in a game where there's lots of three betting, so I imagine he's going to have a narrow range consisting of mostly high cards and pocket pairs from aces down to sevens. I call, the big blind calls, as does the under the gun straddler, we're going four ways to the flop and it's 8-6-4 with two clubs, we have a nut flush draw with two overs and a backdoor straight draw. It's a great flop for us. I check, the big blind and under the gun players both check, then under the gun plus one bets 140. It's not going to be a flop that connects well with this range since it's mostly low cards. For that reason, I consider check raising to hopefully win it without actually having to make a hand. Got so much potential though, and it's not that large of a bet, so I flat, somewhat disguising the strength of my hand. The big blind folds, the under the gun player now raises to 510. In my mind, this seems like a small sizing for someone out of position on the pre-flop raiser with a very draw heavy board and two opponents. Can't imagine a hand like a straight or a set raising for that amount. Seems more likely that this player has a one pair hand and he's trying to see where he's at. Perhaps he's also recognized this won't be a good flop for under the gun plus one's range, so he's taking a small stab at it as a bluff. I only fly to the initial flop bet, so my range is mostly going to be capped at one pair hands. You may think that he just has to get through the pre-flop raiser and then I'll fold a hand like a pair of eights or a pocket seven since I'd be playing out of position. Currently 1,030 in the middle, and it's only 370 more. Under the Gun Plus One is getting almost 3 to 1 on a call, and I'll be getting almost 4 to 1. Except, Under the Gun Plus One asks the Under the Gun player to lift up his hand so we can see how much the Under the Gun player has left. Then he ships it in there. I've only got 2,300 or so. I imagine that Under the Gun Plus One doesn't think that I'll have a hand as strong as I do. He's probably only focused on getting it in against the Under the Gun player, who has about 1650 left. There are going to be very few set combinations in Under the Gun Plus One's range. He's essentially all in for only around 100 big blinds effective. Could be doing that with all kinds of over pairs, some flush draws that I'm ahead of, one or two sets, and maybe even some other combo draw hands. Here's what a very narrow range would look like that he could have. And here's what my hand looks like against that range. You can see that I'm doing pretty well. His actual range might even be quite a bit wider. I definitely could just fold since I don't have that much money invested, but there's a lot already in the middle. I've underwrapped the strength of my hand. There's at least some small chance that I'm ahead of the under the gun plus one player. If not, I'll likely have somewhere between eight and 12 outs. This is an opportunity for me to play my biggest pot ever, and I can probably run it twice to at least chop the pot. Sometimes you just get the feeling that you're gonna win. That's what I have in this case, especially since I haven't made many hands or gotten particularly good runouts today. This is my time. It'll be exciting for the vlog. I make the call, get it in for a monster pot. Under the gun snap folds, which doesn't surprise me too much. He could have had a very wide range and probably wasn't too strong. Eights or four? Either. Twice? Yeah. I show my hand, then we get some bad news. I have a set. A set? Twice. We're up against the top of the opponent's range. We missed a flush earlier today. It'd be a pretty good time to hit a flush on at least one of these two runouts. My heart's racing. The first turn is the deuce of spades. Please give me a club on the river so I can free roll the next board. Nope, it's a jack of spades. We break that one and are only gonna chop this at best. First turn on the second run out is the ace of spades. We make a pair, it doesn't help us at all though. Every card so far has been black, but not one of them has given us what we need. It's like the poker gods are toying with my emotions. It's gonna be one more chance to hit. We don't get there, the opponent scoops it with pocket sixes, which I thought might not even be in his pre-flop opening range. We took a gamble that we really didn't have to take, got it in bad, and we got punished. I reload for another 3,000, I'm in for 6,000 total, and we play a $50 bomb pot at my third table of the night. 
I look down at 9-8 offsuit and see that the board is 1063 rainbow, I've got a gutter. Checks to me on the button, I take a stab at it, betting 175. Bolts to the cutoff, he makes the call. He shouldn't be very strong. I doubt that he would have checked with a hand better than one pair, knowing that there was only one player left to act behind him. The turn is the queen of spades, giving me a double gutter. Any jack or seven will give me a straight. Cutoff checks. I've got no showdown value, but there are several cards that can help me out. I bet again, making it 450. Unless the cutoff has queen 10, it's going to put him in a very difficult situation because that's the best hand that he can have, given the way this is played. He thinks it over for quite some time, then he lets it go. He probably had a 10. We get away with a bluff. That table breaks, then I get moved back to the table where I lost with ace 10 of clubs. I feel like Buckner walking back into Shea. Pick up King Jack suited in the big blind, but the small blind came back from a break and bought the button, so I'm first to act, and I open to 65. Cut off calls. He's a player that 3-bet me earlier when I had ace king offsuit. I know from the first time that I was at the table, he's extremely aggressive. It's heads up. Flop comes king 9-4 rainbow. We've got top pair. Usually I'd c-bet this, but I'm going to underwrap my hand out of position against a loose aggressive player. I check, the opponent unfortunately checks back. Turn is an eight, time to start firing, I bet 70. The cutoff is not impressed, he raises to 260. The raise doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless he has nine eight or pocket eights. Probably just doesn't believe that I've got anything after I check the flop. Could be doing this with a number of hands like straight draws or potentially complete air. I'm not gonna be folding, I call. The river is a three, no straights get there. If we were ahead on the turn, then we should still be ahead. I check to induce a bluff. Cutoff comes through and bets 600. I snap call. We're not good. Pocket Does it become a nightmare day? When you take a shot at higher stakes, you don't necessarily anticipate it going as poorly as possible, but you have to be prepared for it. I'm stuck over 4,000 towards the end of the night. That's when I pick up Ace Jack offsuit in the under the gun straddle. Under the gun plus one limps in, middle position player raises to 100. Bolts to me. I'm in kind of an odd spot here. I could have the best hand, so I don't want to fly and play out of position. I go for the three bet to 400. Under the gun plus one folds. Middle position player sees that I started with less than 100 big blinds and slides in 2,000 total, which has me more than covered. According to upswing, this is roughly what his four bet range should look like. Against that range, I need two to one to make the call. I'm not getting that. I'm getting about 1.6 to one, so this should be a fold, but I'm getting wrecked today and I can't help myself. I call to see if I can change my luck around and finally get a good run out. Once or twice? Once. We only have one shot at this. We're gonna need to drill something and we don't quite know what we need to drill yet. The flop is queen six four rainbow. That's about as bad as it gets. The turn is a five. Now we're not even beating some of the hands that he might have four bet bluffed with. The river is a king. The opponent turns over ace king. We lose that one and feel dumb about it. After losing two full buy-ins, we end a cash game poker vlog with no chips to cash out for only the second time ever. Quick recap here, lost $6,000 tonight, worst losing session of my life. Uh, I was never really in any good spots, but certainly my fault for losing that much. I got it in with a flush draw. I thought that, I thought there was some chance I was even ahead. I thought there was a good chance we'd run it twice and that I would win uh, one of them, uh, at least. But that wasn't the case, so we lost there. Then, Kind of upset about that King Jack hand where the guy turns the set on me and I lost the maximum. Uh, so by the time I pick up Ace Jack in the in the under the gun straddle, I didn't want to just flat the open and play out of position. So I decided three bet was a better route. And then when I got four bets, I could easily just fold there and not put in the extra 1400 but when you're stuck I, if I fold there I'm stuck 4600 and at that point 1400 doesn't seem like that much more but obviously is so I went with it I gambled and it did not pay off lost that one as well so didn't run well played bad lost a lot The Niners won today, so that was that was good. And then we are going to the bar. I think we're gonna grab a drink, and I'll head back to the hotel and try and play better tomorrow. We get a good crew together for drinks, which helps soften the blow. Then somehow we make it just in time for last call at another cool bar in Los Angeles before calling it a night.
That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Although, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna be spending too much time in the comment section for this one. I don't think it's gonna be entirely positive. But uh, usually I'm pretty happy to get back to you. Big thanks goes out to the Hollywood Park Casino for allowing us to host 51020 out there. That's We got five tables, which is pretty incredible. Um, thanks to everybody who showed up. And thanks to Corey, uh, who is the tournament director at Hollywood Park. And uh, he is, he's been on board with what Andrew and I have been doing since the beginning. And he's the one who set up the entire event. So if you see him, maybe give him a high five or something. I kind of bluffed you guys in the beginning. I told you I was really excited to post this video and share it with you. That's not entirely true. Uh, usually when I get crushed, especially when I have my biggest loss ever, it's not something that I really look forward to, and especially if I don't play particularly well, but it's important stuff to share. It's definitely not the end of the world, especially if you're well rolled for the games that you're playing. I think actually having your biggest loss ever is kind of a sign of growth in your poker career. I remember my first ever $100 loss, my first ever $300 loss, First ever $1,000 and $5,000 loss, and now $6,000 loss. Not particularly fun to share, but uh, you know it is important. Hopefully, your your big losses correlate uh, directly with your big wins as well. I mentioned in the beginning all the meetup games that we have. I'm gonna have more information regarding all of those in the description box below. But uh, a few other ones that are coming up. December 10th, we're going out to Maryland Live, and then January 23rd through the 26th, we're going to Asper's Casino in London, and that's our first ever European meetup game, so if you're anywhere in the area, please uh, try and make it out to that one. You have a lot of advanced notice, and uh, I'm not sure when we're gonna be out in the UK or anywhere else in Europe for, for a long time, so that's gonna be a special one for us. Hope you guys are all running the best you've ever ran. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.